Kazakhstan is a country that has a unique geographic location. Located in the center of the Eurasian continent, it represents a special natural complex environment consisting of the most diverse landscapes of both continents. In order to see this for yourself, all you need to do is make a trip by car. Along the way, you will pass all the beautiful landscape zones. This kind of diversity of the natural zones shows the richness of the country's flora and fauna. According to zoologists, today's Kazakhstan has over 6,000 kinds of plants, around 500 types of birds nest here, and 107 types of fish live in its lakes and rivers. In order to preserve its flora and fauna, Kazakhstan has established a network of national parks, sanctuaries, and game reserves. And just recently, this pristine corners of nature became accessible to tourists. Thus, an incentive was created for Kazakhstan to develop ecotourism, which has been thriving almost everywhere else in the world. Ecotourism entails educational travel, with the main focus on the natural environment, or its certain elements, like the landscape, certain kinds of animals, or plants. Every year, hundreds of active tourists from the nearby and faraway countries visit Kazakhstan in search of new experiences. Of course, most of the times the tourists are attracted by the mountains. The leading places for the tourism industries are national parks in the Almaty, South Kazakhstan and of course East Kazakhstan regions. Kazakhstan's borders mostly lie along the mountain ranges, the northern Tenshan, Jungara Latao, Altai, Tarbagatai and Saur. Most of the popular tourist areas are within the country's borders. That is why the rules for visiting the near-border areas are very important for developing tourism in the country. Citizens of Kazakhstan are free to visit the border areas as long as they have an ID on them. Foreigners are required to obtain a special permit from the Migration Police to visit the borderline area. They need to submit their passport with their application and their review period is 10 days. The near-border area must be distinguished from the borderline itself. According to the explanation provided by the border service, the borderline area is 2 kilometers wide along the borders with foreign countries, like China, and 100 meters along the borders with CIS countries, like Russia and Kyrgyzstan. Neither foreigners nor citizens of Kazakhstan have access to the borderline without a special permit from the head of the border guard. You have to consider this when planning your trip. Eastern Kazakhstan has a great diversity of natural and climatic zones. The landscape consists mostly of mountains, mountain taigas, mountain meadows, forests, forest steppes, steppes, valleys, semi-deserts, and deserts. Most of the territory is occupied by the mountain system of Rudne and South Altai, Kalba, and Saur Tarbagatai. The mountains are 800 to 1500 meters in height and in the far east of the Altai, they reach 3,000 to 4,000 meters. For example, Mount Beluha, 4,506 meters. Kazakhstan's part of the Altai has around 350 glaciers with a total area of 99.1 square kilometers. The mountain systems are divided by wide intermountain trenches. The largest are Zaisan and Alakol. 
the Saur and Tarbagatai Mountains attract a lot of interest. The Saur Tarbagatai Mountain system is located in the east of the Sararka. North of it is the Daisan Basin, south of it is the Alakol Basin. The Saur Mountains are located near the Daisan Lake, starting in China, from the western side of the Luangur Lake, and span from the east to the west through large deep basins. On the southern side of the basin are the Konur Mountains, located in China. The Tarbagatai lies near the Saur Ridge, forming several low mountains. The length of the Saur is 110 kilometers. Only its relatively short northern part of 60 to 65 kilometers in length is located in Kazakhstan. Saur is connected with the Manorak mountain ridge. The northern foothills of Saur reach the Zaisan and Black Irtish, and the southern foothills border the Shilakte Basin. Tarbagatai is located in the west of Saur and connected with the Chingasta range. It is lower than Saur, but longer. Its width is around 50 kilometers. The highest point of the Saur Tarbagatai mountain system is on the Saur mountain, the Mustau Peak, 3,816 meters. By its geological composition, the northern slope of Saur is similar to the Altai mountains, and its southern slope is very steep and rocky, similar to the Central Asian mountains. Only the western part of the Tarbagatai enters Kazakhstan's territory, from Khabara Su Pass to the Ayaguz River, as well as the northern slope of its eastern part. Tarbagatai is not as high. Its average height above sea level is 2,000 to 2,200 meters. The highest point, Tastau, reaches 2,992 meters. The structure of Tarbagatai consists of contorted blocks. The mountaintops are very flattened. They are mostly characterized by flattened parts. The mountain slopes are slightly divided by gorges. There are no glaciers here. The Saur Tarbagatai is mostly made of Paleozoic sediment, clays and crystalline schists, sandstone, limestone and conglomerate. Saur has widespread effusive rocks represented by porphyries and porphyrites. Limestone can often be encountered in the Tarbagatai and a lot of granite, which is absent in Saur. The Saur Tarbagatai is a rugged mountain county. Its tectonic structure was formed in the late Paleozoic period. The climate of Kazakhstan's part of the Saur Tarbagatai is continental and similar to the climate of the South Altai. The difference is that it has less precipitation compared to the Altai. In terms of its natural characteristics and climate, it is considered to be a transitional zone between the mountains of southern Siberia and Central Asia. The northern slope of the Saur has mid-mountain meadows and forests consisting of Siberian larch and Shrank spruce tree. Siberian fir trees can be found blending in in the spruce forests. In the river basins, the forests reach heights of around 2,600 meters above sea level. In the Tarbagatai, forests can be found only in the river basins, with the growth of wild apple trees common for the southern slope valley. Outside the valleys, the southern slope has well-developed bushes of rosehip, honeyberry, and meadowsweet. The upper mountain belts of both ridges have subalpine and alpine landscapes. The meadows have plants that are endemic to the Altai and North Kazakhstan. The animal world of Saur and Tarbagatai is very diverse. Brown bears, wild sheep, roe deer, mountain goats, mufflins, wolves, foxes and other animals can be encountered here. Animals that are typically found in the mountains, steppes and semi-steppe regions are also found here. They include the northern wolf snake, white-headed crane bustard, palace sand goose, snowcock, golden eagle, sacred falcon, and eagle owl, which are all listed in the Red Book of Kazakhstan. The mufflins of the Sarah Mountains are also included into the Red Book and attract great interest of scientists. According to the fauna register, the Sour mufflins are of the central Kazakhstan subspecies. 
However, beyond the Chinese border, the mufflins of the same population are considered as saur mufflins. Logically, we can suppose that saur mountain sheep live in saur and the central Kazakhstan sheep live in central Kazakhstan. There is no clear answer on the number of mufflins in Saur since exhaustive calculations have not yet been done, and this is a difficult task, because most of the animals spend their summer time behind the engineered structures on the border of Kazakhstan and China, where the access of civilians is restricted. But according to the expert assessment of Kazakhstan zoologists, up to 800 animals may be inhabiting the ridge, and their subspecies is yet to be studied. Wild boars are also frequently met in this area. Their high population is caused by many factors. Even though wild boars are mostly vegetarians, it is rather better to keep away from them. Sometimes wild animals can attack people, considering them to be some other animals. People must clearly show the animal that they are humans, which means standing up straight, holding something in their hand and shouting out in a loud voice. As opposed to humans, the animals never attack out of revenge or to prove something, but solely to protect themselves or their offspring. Instinct tells the animal if an aggressive move is worth the risk. Behavioral instincts can be triggered by various factors, such as the size of an object which represents the threat, distance from it, and any present noises. For instance, being 100 meters away from a human, a boar or a bear will prefer to run away rather than attack. But if you happen to face a dangerous animal 5 meters away from you, it might instinctively decide to attack. In the zone of intensive distant pasture cattle tending, the population and population density of Siberian red deer is low, but deeper inland there is an amazing pristine corner of wild nature. This part of the mountains remains untouched due to its remoteness and low agricultural value. No roads, no bridges. Here in the wild land with no cattle and almost no people, the animals behave differently than in the farmlands. Even their daily activities are different. The Siberian red deer leave their morning feeding grounds later and come to the evening feeding ground earlier than in the farmlands. In the wild areas, when the Siberian red deer and other animals see a human being, they first take a long time to observe what they see and can let people get as close as 300 or 400 meters. And only when they finally realize that this unknown object is just a person, they slowly retreat and periodically look back watching the foreign invader. This behavior shows that the population of wild animals in Kazakhstan is being restored, and at the same time the tourism industry is developing. We are for sustainable tourism. In the recreational areas, environmentally safe types of natural resource management need to be developed, which will raise the motivation of the local population to preserve the natural environment. However, the ethical principles of the preserved area should not be violated. These natural reserves were established as beacons of the majesty of wild nature, and commercial interests should never affect its natural existence.